Hi, good to be back with you again for another day of rebirth. I'm trusting God on your behalf that indeed today will be an awesome day, tremendous day of breakthrough, tremendous day of blessings, tremendous day of testimonies of good things this Sunday morning, and not only Sunday morning, but throughout the entire week. So bless you. Thanks for joining us. All right, so let's jump right in. Remember, we started on the issue of saved, saved, the saved initiative. And it's as we round out the year, um, we, we were doing the, the whole theme of loving your neighbor. Remember, we started the, um, the year with loving God, uh, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength. And then we went on to loving yourself. And now we're closing out the year with loving your neighbor. And we said that we're looking at the expressing that through the saved initiative, the S-A-V-E-D. And today we're talking about the availability. But before we jump into all of that, uh, let me just tell you really something that happened to me not too long ago. Uh, I was to get on a flight to go to Ohio. And um, I was sitting in the living room of, of the apartment in Lake Worth. When I got a phone call and um, the, the director of, the, of the, the, the organization that I was supposed to meet with in Ohio, uh, there in, 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 in uh, Drake, uh, in, not Drake, in, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, I believe it's Cleveland, um, Ohio, that um, called me to say, uh, where are you? Are you on the flight? Did you miss the flight? I don't know if they called him to, to say, you know, or, or, or there was, a pickup was there or something, but I had missed the flight by like an hour. And I was there sitting at, uh, in the living room working on a presentation that I had to do and, um, I, when I got the, the call. And I felt so down about missing a, a flight by so much, being so oblivious to what time it was while I, just sitting there working on the laptop. And I, I said, you know, I, I'm, I, I will get there. I, I apologize for missing that flight. I will be on the next flight. Uh, no, I didn't know how I was going to get on the, the next flight because I, was, I wasn't ready. I was sitting on the, on the, the, at the, the, the chair um, working on my laptop. And um, I, I, just in faith, I said, I will be there. You know, this is miles. This is two flights away, you know. Taxi, train, plane, walk, bus, ride, all of that, you know, to get there. But I promised him that I would be there. I, I said, I'm going to, I will be there. Yes, I've missed this flight, but I will be there. In, uh, I'll be checking into that hotel, getting ready to, to do the presentations and go through the whole um, Excel Leadership Network um, uh, session that I was supposed to go there to do. And uh, I didn't know how I would actually execute that. But you know what? At midnight, I was checking into the hotel there in, in, in Mason, Ohio. Uh, you pass through Cleveland and get to Mason. So uh, there in Mason, uh, I, was, I checked into the hotel. I got there to start the event the next day. So uh, I, I said all of that to say, God came through. I mean, I, I can't tell you the, 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 the amount of testimonies of God coming through for me to make me get there uh, that day um, from the, the Uber uh, coming right on time, dropping me right to the, the train as the train is pulling in, you know, um, and I'm getting on that, that, that um, tri-rail to get to Fort Lauderdale. I'm in Lake Worth. And I have to get to Fort Lauderdale and from, from there to get to, to catch the next flight that's going into Baltimore and from Baltimore and so on. And, um, and reaching into to, to Cleveland at about um, minutes to 11 in the night and, um, and then getting from Cleveland to Mason, which was about 40, 40 minutes away um, at that time of night. But as I said, I checked in. I got. I was checking in at about midnight um, that 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 day, and so so I saw God's God show up again. You know, show up in His faithfulness to be there, uh, to be there, and to 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 show His sovereignty. You know, even when we we slip up, when we mess up, because I the fault was mine. I messed up. I I you know. 
I, 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 I totally um, forgot the time and, you know, was, was engrossed with, with, with just working on these projects and, and so on. But um, so, so God showed himself strong on my behalf, you know, um, making everything work out and my actually getting to that location um, that day. Uh, and I've said all of that to say that God is faithful indeed, and he proves himself that he makes himself available to us when we need him. He makes himself available to us when we need him. Let me say that again. God makes himself available to us when we need him. That's why he tells us to pray. You know, in Luke 11, he says, ask, seek, knock. He says that, you know, if we ask, he's going he's gonna to answer. He's going to provide it. If we knock, he will open what we have need of, the, the way that we need open, the thing we need open. And uh, if we um, seek, we will find. He will ensure that we find. So he says, so it basically is his making himself available to us when we come calling. Again, the Bible says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it means God has made himself available to whosoever would call. Let me say it again. God makes himself available to whosoever will call. The God of the universe, the creator of the ends of the earth, makes himself available to whosoever will call. That's why we all can be saved. That's why we can be delivered. That's why we have a hope. Because Almighty God, the wonderful Lord God of the ages, makes himself available. And similarly, he asks us to make ourselves available for other individuals. Now, we are not omnipotent with all resources and, you know, omniscient with all knowledge and omnipresent being all over, everywhere at the same time. That is, in, that's God's ability. Yet, in our mortal, limited ability, God says, you know, in his word, he wants, he declares, you know, that we should uh, love our neighbor, you know, and, and expressly so. Remember the, the, the story of the Good Samaritan in, uh, in, 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 in the gospel, where Jesus gives this example of this Good Samaritan who, who and I'm, I'll, I'll share with you the text, where, um, where the Lord says, you know, there was the good Samaritan who took the time to help uh, the, 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 the gentleman who was, I believe it's Luke 10, um, 33, Luke 10, 30, um, from 33 down, uh, where the, 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 the Samaritan saw the man injured, wounded by thieves, and he took the time to make himself available to help the man who was robbed and beaten. And he put him on the, his, his own donkey, transported him to the place to get help, and put him up in a, in a hotel and paid in advance for his treatment. Had to leave, had to do what he had to do. He's not omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. Came back again, uh, well, committed to come back again and uh, if there was anything further to, to give of himself. So he made himself available to the help of this individual. And Jesus was teaching that this is, this is the kind of thing that the Father wants, that we make ourselves available to others. And this is, why I'm saying this is because this is the A in the saved initiative, reminding you that, that the, the S was for sharing. We spoke about that on Sunday, Sunday Gone. And the A is for being available to those who are our neighbors. And remember now when the, the Bible talks about loving your neighbor, it isn't meaning just the person next door. It, it includes the person next door, but it really means those in your sphere, those that you rub shoulders with, those around you, those close to you, those you know, that you, you, you will run into. That's what it means, your, your, your neighbor, your, 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 those in your circle those in your you know area of influence that they you you express loving care and compassion to them you you know if if, they, if they're asked if they're interviewed if they're checked you know does such does chris care about you you know they should be able to say yeah i think so by virtue of x y and z 
you know, does Sh Cheryl care about you? Yes, I think so. She did. She, I, I saw she really tried. She did X, Y, and Z. You know, did, did does Henry care about you? Yes, he. I, 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 I would say so because clearly because he did such such and such, and he helped us out, and he he was available when we we had need of such and such. So those that you rub shoulders with should, if they were asked, they were they should be able to say, well, I saw some. I saw him do this, I saw her do that, and she, she tried to do that, and he tried to do that. They would have to be grossly unreasonable. If you have expressed compassion and care and made yourself available, and, uh, and, and they're denying that, and you know, well, you know, you, you, we do have some persons that take for granted your expressions and your love and your effort and so on, but the, the, the truth, if the truth came out, it should be that they can say, that yes, I experienced compassion from him, or I experienced compassion for her. When we were hurting, when my family was hurting, when I was hurting, he made himself available to help. When we were down and, and, and you know, and really conflicted and confused and, and, and in a bad situation, she made herself available to help. That's, that's important. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is what God commits. In Hebrews 13, 5, it says, well, the, the first part, it says, let your conversation, which means your lifestyle, you know, be without covetousness. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Now, this is the part I want you to hear, which is God's committing himself, right? Right? For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God has committed himself that way. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that if he can commit himself that way to us, that should bolster us to, to, to be able to sacrifice, to be there for others. Now, we can't say, I will never leave you. Oh, um, Curleen, uh, my, I'm compassionate toward you. I will never leave you or forsake you because you're my friend. I will never leave you. You don't want to, to you know, to commit like that, you know, um, or, oh, John, you know, um, I am available to you. I will never leave you or forsake you. That can be a difficult thing for a human being to promise, you know, because remember, no human being's shoulders are broad enough to bear the weight of another human being's full emotional uh, load, you know. Um, so you, you can't promise to always be there every time, but you certainly can say, as best as my, uh, of my ability, I will be there. I, I, I won't forsake you. I mean, as best, as best as I can, I will be there for you. And I think that's fair, okay? So, um, but God, so God commits himself to us and he makes himself available so we can be strengthened to be available for others because, you know, that's, then that's why the first part of this verse says, you know, let your conversation be without covetousness. You don't have to be greedy for stuff to say, hey, I can't do nothing until I have a million dollars, a billion dollars in the bank. I can't be available to help. You know, I have to go plow the land. I have to go do this to earn and so on. But the reality is, look, God has your back. You know, that good Samaritan, he took out of his own, his own pocket to help to be available for the gentleman. You know, knowing that, you know, I sow, I will reap. This is, this is a good investment. Help in another human being is a good investment. Yes, I could go spend another hour on the job and get overtime, but this family may need me to sit with them for a while. This individual may need me to help them. You know, I heard a, a colleague of mine say, you know, there was one friend who, who as simple as needing the grass cut, and he went and he made himself available to help. You know, his intention is just to help cut the whole place with that friend, making himself available, and that's, that's awesome. And I know there are others of you who have been doing stuff like that. You know, somebody um, needs, again, so many stories, somebody is sick, and you go there, and you bring soup for them. You know, you literally cook and you bring soup to, to, to help the person who's not feeling well. You know, because they can't, they, 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 they can't get out of the bed to go get the food. And you took it on yourself to go get that food for them and made it, you know, wonderful, wonderful. That's what we're talking about, being available. 
being available because that makes our Christianity credible. If the people will believe and unsee the love of God because we do what is loving, what is, what is compassionate, and what is caring. As they say, you know, you, you've heard it a million times, right? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So in making ourselves available, we are demonstrating that we do care about your situation, you know, especially for like us pastors who get on the platform and we're behind the pulpit and we're always talking. You know, it, sometimes people will say, you're always talking, I'm hearing you and you, you're preaching and you're passionate in your preaching. But where is the passion to help? To not only say, but also to do. And that, that is an imperative that we are able to, 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 we know when our heads hit the pillow, right, um, at night to, to sleep, for us as Christian leaders, um, we have to know that it's not all about talk. That we are doing our best to be there, to be there physically. We're doing our best to show um, care in a, in a practical, um, pragmatic way that we're able to show. To, to say, look, we believe the gospel that Jesus Christ came and he, he died. He gave himself for us to rescue us and he was resurrected the third day, you know, and, and God raised him up um, and he's seated on the right hand of God the Father. And we, we know that our, our, our Lord and Savior demonstrated his love for us. He demonstrated his love for us by going to the cross making himself available to rescue us. It cost him. It was uncomfortable. It wasn't easy. It wasn't cute. It wasn't nice. But he did it because we needed it. He made himself available. And he is our Lord and Savior. And so, because he did it, we learn to do it for others. We make ourselves available. And sometimes it costs. It, it's uncomfortable. I remember some time ago, I used to, um, there were some young fellows who were uh, living in the inner city and, 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 and some uh, rough, rough conditions. And um, I would invite them up to, to stay with me for, for the, on a couple of weekends. And, you know, if you know young men, you know, I wasn't, you know, of course, I still consider myself a young man, but this was over 20 years ago. But um, when they came, would come up to, to my, my, my house, young men eat. So they would mow through the, the whole place. And come Sunday evening, they would mow through everything. And I, I have worked the next week, and I'm thinking, all right, okay, what's going to be in the house come Monday? You know, what's going to be there Tuesday? What do I have to now do? And it can be uncomfortable. It can be a little, you know, um, tough, um, sacrificial, because it's, you know, you, you, you have a plan and you're doing something and you, you, you know, you've pulled to, to be able to mentor these guys. You've taken them out of their spaces, brought them into another space, and, and so on. And it costs. But, you know, it's what I can tell you, it was absolutely worth it. it it was difficult at times, challenging, you know, uncomfortable sometimes, you know, on, it wasn't easy, but it was worth it. It was worth it. And if we learn anything from Jesus, our Lord and Savior, it should be that we can, can uh, be sacrificial for others. We can extend ourselves for others, even though it makes us uncomfortable. So this is what we're, we're talking about today, that, you know, the call of God. And you don't have to be a pastor like me. You don't have to be a pastor and a preacher like um, Simon. Or, you know, you don't have to be a preacher like your local pastor, whoever, whatever church you go to. You don't have to be a pastor to be, you know, to represent the, 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 the passion of the Lord Jesus Christ. You just have to be a Christian. Once you're a Christian, you follow the footsteps of Jesus. Remember, uh, it says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good. Acts 10, 38, 
went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He went about doing good. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we, Christ, we have the job of going about doing good. And that's what saved is about. The saved initiative. Being available is that second one. You know, somebody has need of, of, of a shoulder to lean on. Somebody just wants to talk. You know, you'll always have that. Somebody is going to need to talk. Somebody, because talking is therapy. If she can just sit there with you and talk, she'll feel better. You, won't, you probably won't even need to give any answers. You won't need to, to come up with some wise saying, you know, to solve all her problems. But just being there to let her talk so she knows someone cares and someone hears, someone has taken the time to listen, you, that can save a life, literally save a life. You know, sometimes some persons who have committed suicide, if they had someone to talk to, they would not have committed suicide. Oftentimes, it is just someone to talk to. They want to be heard. They want to be seen. They want to know that they, are, they matter and someone cares. You know, sometimes in the, in the back of their heads, they're thinking, you know, if I go, no one will miss me. No one cares. If no one wants to even hear what I have to say. No one will miss me. My voice doesn't matter. My presence doesn't matter. And so if you just take that time, make yourself available to take, your, take the time to listen to her, to listen to him, you can be saving a life. And not only that, you know, if they're, they could be miserable because they don't get to express themselves and get the therapy of talking, and so they go take it out on a child in their home, they can take it out on a partner. They could take it out on, you know, on an on a elderly parent or elderly person. They can even end up doing some kind of criminal activity, you know, robbing somewhere because they felt the stress and the pressures, especially in these COVID days where, you know, all this chaos is happening. If you just take the time, make yourself available to listen to her, to listen to him, it can make all the difference in the world. And it, again, Credible Christianity. Credible. It, it says, I hear what is happening here. And it gives them a sense of, you know, so, so I matter. Someone loves me. Someone cares enough. I can tell you, there were days um, when I was younger, of course, you know, oh, just for someone to sit down and talk to. Just for someone to, to, to hear me and hear what's going on. Well, thank God I had some of those persons. I remember, you know, like Pastor Franz Fletcher, you know, um, I remember I'd gone through a, a, a rough situation and I needed someone to talk to at that time. Someone who, you know, with faith and who understood um, the, the issues of, 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 of you know, of being a Christian and Bible school and these things. Um, and, and hearing the call of God, you know, and, and wanting to respond to that. And he took the time. I, I will never forget it. I'll never forget, you know, his driving up to, to, to I, was, I went up, I met him at the church, and he came. It was, you know, it, it wasn't a time to be at the church, you know, but I just needed someone to talk to at that point. And he came, and we sat, and he listened and that helped, and I've ne never forgotten a text that, a passage that he just dropped into my soul. He, you know, at the time he said, you know, um, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, be steadfast, unmovable, uh, abounding in the work of the Lord, because you know that you, the, 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 your work is not in vain, you know, you, you'll, you'll be rewarded in the end, type of thing. And that, that verse kept me and the, the fact that he was there to hear me it kept me going it, it empowered me to keep on and and to to, to continue and the bible school and and doing ministry and and so on you know um he took the time he made himself available so i've benefited from from others making themselves available you know um 
pastors like that, colleagues, even um, family, you know, sit down and make the time available to, 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 to listen to, to your grouse and to just hear you without being judgmental or, or condemning or, you know, or, you know, or lashing out in any way, but just listening. Again, I recall my brother doing that, you know, um, uh, when I was engaged, you know, um, before my, my, uh, my present, before I got engaged and married to my present wife, I was engaged before. And, uh, um, you know, we were young and, 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 and jumping into something and needed some clarity on some stuff. And they were, you know, he, he was there, you know, and individuals were there to listen and to help me, to guide me through. And thank God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here today. Um, praise God, no depression, and so, you know, and so on. And I, I've taken the time I've received from others. They're making themselves available. They're making themselves available for me. And I've learned to make myself available for others too. The young man, and, you know, of course, you, if you're a young woman, you have to be wise with how you do that, making yourself available to them. You know, so you know, for obvious reasons, but I have benefited from it, and so I passed it on. So it's 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 your turn too to make yourself available to someone. It can make all the difference in the world. And of course, you know, it's it's we're making ourselves available to to first to God, of course. You know, Lord, here I am. You know, as as they say, you have to first be available to the Lord to for Him to direct you. You're available to him primarily and he'll direct you you know because you can't be everywhere all the all the while so you have to know you know let the Lord lead you you know okay um, such and such is calling on your time such and such uh, and you know again thank God for 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 wisdom around you I, I know sometimes I've gotten calls at midnight and you know persons wanted me to come out of my house you know, sometimes young ladies, you know, could you come help me? There's such and such. And thank God, wisdom prevail. You know, I'm available, Lord, and the Lord will direct. No, get someone to do that. Um, that, you, that that's not prudent. You know, that's, that's not wise. Um, at that time, you know, unless, you know, you're going with a team, you know, it doesn't matter what's happening. You, you, it's not prudent, as, you know, you know a, a man going to a woman's house at midnight to rescue her. From anything just like that you know security issue you get prudent help with that and you're not going to try to be a superhero so uh, I made myself available to the Lord you have to make yourself available to the Lord first that's the primary person so he can lead you and give you wise counsel about what to do how to do and when to do right and then you know you figure out okay who are they who are they, the the some ones that I, I will end up being available to as I'm available to the Lord and it tends to be, again, those in your neighborhood. Those, you know, who are the people in your neighborhood? The people in your neighborhood, your neighbors literally, and your neighbors socially. Those who, you know, you, you're again in your sphere. So, and those can be family. Of course, family takes priority. You know, you want to be there and be available for your family. Be available for your family. What's needed, you know, the time to listen to your son, listen to your daughter, listen to your spouse, listen to your father, listen to your mother, you know, and so on, right? To listen, to be there, available to them when they want to talk. Again, spouses is a big, you know, usually a big thing for men and women. For, you know, um, communication is one of those areas uh, that jeopardizes marriages when the communication is not good because one person isn't present listening. They may be in the house, but they're absent, you know, mentally or emotionally. Um, and so taking the time to be available to your spouse is important. Okay, so available to family first, but then available also to the body of believers. You know, okay, again, some people are very focused to to um it's only outside of the church but there i can tell you for sure like what happened to me um, i was a christian i was young minister you know um and all of that but i needed someone to talk to um back in the day and thank god you know as i said pastor france and the other uh, individuals um who were their friends you know um chris parker sarge you know who we, we call sarge and others, you know, um, Christian friends 
were there and they would listen, you know, and, and, and uh, even though, you know, again, he's already saved. He should know, you know, nobody didn't say, you're, you, you're a Christian, you should know what to do. You should know, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you're okay. No, I wasn't okay. I'm a Christian. I needed guidance. I wanted to express. I wanted to talk. And someone was there. Uh, you know, individuals were there. So you have to make yourself, again, available to those in the body of Christ. They, they want to call and talk. You know, it, it can't be for 20, you know, you know, it might not be 20 minutes. Maybe just 10 you can take. Uh, sometimes it can be just 20 minutes or it can be, you know, an hour if necessary, if you can afford it. But it can keep someone on the straight and narrow. You're just taking the time can keep somebody on the straight and narrow. You know, if you're too busy, you know, and when the Lord is nudging you toward an individual and allowing the individual to contact you and you know they've been on your heart and the Lord has been talking to you about just taking the time to be there for that Christian brother or sister, you know, um, it's imperative that we do that so that they can heal if they need healing or get help if they need, you know, getting help. Just to, to the therapy of speaking, or it may be you do have a word like well, that, which was given to me, First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight, that has you know, bol bolstered my walk and kept me going. Just that verse. And this is again over twenty years ago, um, more like twenty five, uh, possibly thirty years. Uh, uh, no, not as much as so, but certainly over twenty five years. And I still remember that 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 moment of his making himself available. So someone in the body of Christ. So your family, first of all, you, you available, make yourself available to God. Make yourself available to the, your, your family. Your, you know, sister, brother, mother, father, um, spouse, son, daughter. Make yourself available to them. But also make yourself available to the body of Christ. So other believers, other Christians, those in the church, Make yourself available to talk to, to hear what the, what the youngster is going through, hear what the teenager is going through, what the young girl, so that they, 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 there is a healthy society, quote unquote, ha happening in the church, a healthy community happening in the fellowship, because we care about each other, so that, she, you know, she doesn't have to always try to knock on the guidance counselor's door alone, you know, at school, but and in her church, she can sit and, and uh, she can ask that, that older lady who has so much wisdom for guidance and she'll, she'll get the guidance. Or he can come to brother such and such and get the guidance. That's very important. I've heard it before where, you know, the, the complaints and the cries of youngsters that, you know, um, I reached out to such and such. He was supposed to call me back. He's never called me back. I don't know what, what, what to do. I, I really want to talk to him. Please don't let that be said of you. Don't let any youngster be there saying, I reached out to such and such and she never called me back or he never called me back and he has no time to talk to me. You know, certainly if you're a pastor, you know, that should not happen. If you're a counselor and you're in the church, working in the church, you know, that should never happen. You know, we think of some of these corporate organizations that, you know, they don't let the phone ring three times. You know, the policy is don't let the phone ring more than three times. Get up and answer it. And you make sure within 24 hours you get back to an individual. If you can't deal with their case, then you make sure within 24 hours you get back to them. You know, for what? For profit. For profit. There are these policies of staying connected with clients and customers. You know, how much more in the church, the kingdom, for the well-being of souls, to keep someone saved, to keep them strong, to keep them hopeful and healthy in their spirit, we, we should be able to make ourselves available. You know, you, maybe you can't say, I'm going to get back in touch with you 24 hours, but at least before 72 hours is out, try to touch back base with the individual. It may be critical. You know, they may be critical. So you, you certainly, if you can do it within the 24 hours, certainly try. Um, make yourself available to those in the church, to those who are Christians, those who are believers. Make yourself available. You know, again, if it's a, it's, yeah, I know that there are situations you have to be careful for. You know, like a colleague of mine, mine once, a young lady said to him, Oh, I need to sit and talk with you. I, have, I need to talk with you. I have some confession. You know, I need to talk with you. She said, what, what do you want to talk about? Well, I, I need to tell you, I have a lust problem and I'm lusting over you. You know, that, that's not helpful. And of course, she was up to something. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad my friend was very prudent with how he managed that. 
So yeah, you have to be prudent with what you, how you manage stuff, you know, as well. Um, even in the church, and that they tend to say, of course, if it's a female, you try to direct them to a female. And if it's a male, you know, you try to direct them to a male um, for 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 time and counseling and just a shoulder to lean on and so on. And you have to, you know, make sure you're you're, you're guarding those gates so that it's it, the person isn't becoming emotionally attached or emotionally dependent on you because you're available to them. So you have to treat it wisely. And sometimes it may mean you listen to them and then direct them to the, the correct person um, to, for further for counseling or further treat, treatment or therapy or so on and so on. But sometimes just being there. I remember again, I kept some of these guys out of a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble, just taking the time to be there for them and to mentor them and to, you know, I'll never forget, we would go to like a Devon house or we we go to somewhere to hang out or, you know, just laugh and, and so on. And they had fellowship. We had fellowship, just time away from stressful environments. And it helped, you know, and there's so many youngsters, young guys waiting for that, young ladies waiting for that. They need a big sister. They need a big brother, mentors that will be available to them so that they can be saved from their situation. They're already Christians, but they need to be saved from their situation. And finally, the non-Christians, you have to be available. Sometimes it's your coworkers or your classmates who certainly need someone to talk to. And these are the ones, of course, you can be available and then you want to share the gospel so that they have hope in Jesus Christ. You know, so we're, we're, we're being available to the household of faith, but be available also to those who are unbelievers. You say, oh, I, I, can't, I don't want to be around non-Christians who are smoking. And hello, Jesus had prostitutes around him. Jesus had tax collector and fisherman who cost bad word. He had to be around them and raise them and, and mentor them, you know, disciple them. Okay, Peter, you know, had, was rough around the edges. You know, John and James, rough around the edges, clashing up on issues, clashing on issues, you know. Um, but he, he mentored them and they were saved. They are apostles and we know them today. So you never know who that smoking person is or that cussing guy will be, you know, um, when they get saved. So, you, you, you know, you don't judge them. You don't condemn them. She, yes, she may be a lesbian. Yes, he may be a homosexual. But you can be available to hear him, available to hear her because you can save her. You can save him, you know, just by your being available to hear them and not condemning them. This is very important. And so we show that, you know, we're credible Christians. We're credible Christians by making ourselves available to those around us in our sphere. Thanks for listening today as we, we, we continue with the SAVED initiative because as we wind out this year, I want to empower us to make sure that we're making a difference. Uh, in our Christianity, we are proving that we are living and walking in compassion and we're demonstrating the love of Jesus. Let me pray for you and then you have a tremendous week, okay? Father, I thank you for those watching. I pray, Lord, that you would move upon them mightily and use them. Father, we understand that things don't get better until we get going, we get busy for you. We know things don't get better without all getting busy for you. So, Father, I pray that you would move mightily upon the spirit of the person watching. And, God, you would get them moving for you, loving on those around them. Lord, paying the price so that others might be saved and delivered from situations. I bless them now. Cover them and give them breakthrough after breakthrough this week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you. We'll talk again next week. Thanks for watching.